Within a year, he was arrested for attempting to rape a young fruit picker. He went to court and was granted bail on the grounds he had a home and a job. Well, we now know that he in fact had neither, but he was allowed back into the community and thanks to a few good friends in the Baptist church, he was well looked after. The church moved Bailey and his family 100k south to Olwaka and the house has since been burned. Three days before Bailey was to appear in court on the attempted rape charge, he went looking for his next victim. She was to be 15-year-old Kylie Smith. The fourth former had been riding when Bailey stopped in his car to talk to her. He then abducted her, violently raped her, then shot her and calmly went home to his girlfriend, Rose Shortland. When he finished doing what he did to Kylie, he came home that night and we had sex. I mean, he's a pretty callous bugger and I don't believe anyone like that could ever change, ever. Bailey was arrested the next day and the news spread quickly. I said, Bailey's been picked up for, you know, he murdered, raped and murdered Kylie Smith. Bang. The floodgates opened. She was finally safe. She could talk. I was lucky to be alive. And I couldn't even speak on the phone when she rang me. I just, um, I, I just went into total shock. The victim, who was now 14, walked into a police station and told her story. She was told her complaint would be put on hold until after Bailey was convicted for the rape and murder of Kylie. And once he was jailed, they put her allegations to him. But that never happened. The police decided not to take any further action because they believed it wouldn't make any difference to his life sentence. We now know that police in fact had made the decision not to prosecute Bailey within 21 days of the teenager making her statement three months before Bailey even pleaded guilty to Kylie's rape and murder, actions that were later described in a review by South Island police boss as not justified or warranted. Southern District Crime Manager, Detective Inspector Ross Pinkham. Doesn't that show a dismissive attitude by police towards this complainant and her case? No, not at all. But your own superintendent said that this course of action was unjustified and unwarranted. That's a review that's been done 11 years later of it and so I don't know the reasons why the staff at the time cleared these stats. You know, I've lived all these years believing that the police didn't believe me. They shut my file without telling me and have left me in limbo. We believe that in April of uh, uh, 1992 that she was contacted by the police and explained the situation. I was told that I'd be um, responded to and I never ever heard from them again. Not one word? Not one word. 